<laughs> you, you, think, you, you honestly think you can take me, do you? <laughs> you're like six inches tall, you're a puppet. Oh, oh, I've not seen your final form. I've not seen Delsin's final form, everyone. Oh my god! Weren't expecting that, were you? I saw it in a motorway service station and was waiting for a chance to write that in somehow. But anyway, what Delsin just did is perform a trick video game bosses have been pulling on unsuspecting players for years. I mean, I shouldn't say unsuspecting, really, because we know, don't we, that old Sammy Scientist, who's been hobbling about for the entire game pretending to have a bad back, is absolutely... Absolutely 100% going to down some monstrous concoction and transform into a writhing mass of limbs and teeth when it comes to actually fighting him. Sammy Scientist, played by Final Fantasy VII's Hojo there. Here are seven more video game bosses who didn't look like that before we fought them. Beware of spoilers for Final Fantasy VIII, Batman Arkham Asylum, Resident Evil 4, Jack 2 and Kingdom Hearts 2. But let's get the Final Fantasy entry out of the way first because as usual, I could fill this entire video with entries from Square Enix's all-conquering JRPG franchise, Kefka from Final Fantasy VI, Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, Jekt from Final Fantasy X, but I'm plumping for Final Fantasy VIII's final boss, Sorceress Ultima Sia, because frankly, her final form is just weird. She's already ticked off all the boxes on the annoying Boss Tropes application form, doesn't reveal herself until near the end, check, is the puppet master for countless other villains you think are the big bad for ages, check, wants to destroy the world just because, check, but then she goes one further in the final battle by transforming not once, but twice. First you beat her in her human form, easy, then you beat her guardian force griever, a little bit harder but still shouldn't give you too much trouble. Then she junctions herself to griever, junctioning being a thing our party has managed perfectly well all throughout the game with a simple press of X in the menu, but no, that's not good enough for Ultima Seer, we have to go and physically fuse with the beast, making this monstrosity. Beat that, and you reveal Ultima Seer's true form. Which turns out to be this kaleidoscopic nightmare with a hole for a head and a neck that for ages I was convinced was a weird squashed face with its tongue sticking out. See it? Oh yeah, and there's Ultima Seer's human form dangling upside down underneath. She looks like some kind of Cronenbergian playing card. Kill it with fire and lion hearts. Number two, it's Joker from Batman Arkham Asylum who spends the entirety of the game prancing about cackling and always being about seven steps ahead of Batman until you finally get to face him at the end. In Joker's defence, he's not a fighter and so if he's going to face the Dark Knight mano a mano, he's going to need to give himself a bit of a makeover. Enter the Titan Virus right into Joker's bloodstream, which transforms him into this lumbering bane alike, although Joker does manage to retain his mental faculties, which may explain why, despite now having biceps the size of a hog roast, he still mainly flits about the edge of the battle, making Batman fight goons instead of him, which is another irritating video game boss habit, isn't it? Just let me fight you! In the end, Joker doesn't really make the most of being ten feet of warped man meat, and presents his pointy chin three times for Batman to punch. Pow, boff, zap, etc. Our next entry is from Resident Evil 4, another series that could take over this entire video, seeing as how pretty much every major boss in Resi Land starts out human-ish before injecting themselves with something horrible and transforming into an abomination. My favourite is Lord Osmond Sadler in Resi 4, however, who produces this cracking monologue. Oh, Mr. Kennedy, you entertain me. To show my appreciation, I will help you awaken from your world of cliches. I think I might have to shoot him in the eyes. Yes, Sadler, you really have trampled that world of cliches into the dust. I mean, what's the point of this? Say you win this fight, Sadler, then what? How are you going to sit on your sofa again? Where are you going to shop for clothes? Who's going to swipe right on your Tinder profile? I really don't think you've thought this whole transform into a multi-limbed eyes on my elbows grotesquery just to beat Leon Kennedy thing through, have you? 
die. Our fourth entry is Kor from Jack 2 Renegade, who not only does the Oh, I'm a weak and feeble old man, and now I'm a massive monster thing, but also the Oh, I'm a wise old good guy, and now I'm a massive monster thing as well. That's right, this seemingly benign Gandaldor Kenobi type turns out to be the leader of the Metalheads, the horrible final boss of Jack 2. Which is really bloody hard, by the way. And he takes the form of this nightmare scorpion thing, which for the most part sits in its nest and chucks mobs at you before scuttling about the place and kicking your ass. Ugh, always the one you least suspect, isn't it? Who would have thought this pious old bloke with a walking stick would turn out to be the game's big bad and transform into a 20-foot scorpion lord of the game overs? We all guessed it, right? Our fifth entry is from God Hand, a cult classic PS2 beat-em-up that boasts industry legends Shinji Mikami and Atsushi Inaba on its dev team, as well as a brilliantly over-the-top combat system that allows you to pummel enemies with lightning-fast combos and even use them to hit a home run with a baseball bat conjured from thin air. A recurring boss in God Hand is Elvis, a larger-than-life cigar-chomping braggart who mostly stands about letting you go to town on his not inconsiderable guts before strutting off as if he's won the fight anyway. Eventually, Elvis reveals his true form, his demon form, which basically consists of lots of mouths. Which sort of makes sense, seeing as how most of his trash talk is based around the central idea of him eating you. So yeah, now you have to fight a thing with a mouth for a stomach and mouths hands. Fine with me. Hopefully you'll get some exercise. Oh ho ho ho! Wrecked. Come on then Elvis, a little less conversation, a little more walloping you in the head until you finally keel over and die. We've got a right old bizarre entry at number 6, and it's Kamashida from Persona 5, although I could have included any of the bosses from this game to be fair, but we'll go with the first one to avoid spoilers as much as possible. Now by day, Kamashida is a former Olympian who now teaches high school volleyball. Also by day, but in secret, he's an abusive bully, torturing, blackmailing and even sexually assaulting his pupils to solidify his own warped image of himself as king of the castle. No surprise then that when you finally confront Kamashida inside the rotten recesses of his own subconscious, you find he's taken on a form that more accurately represents his inner nature. A disgusting perversion of gluttony and twisted sexual desire, Boss Kamashida is truly a sight to behold, glugging down female bodies and slurping the air with a thick blue tongue, a deranged bent to his stare, and horns protruding from his head like the devil he is. Oh yeah and he's got no clothes on too. All in all, laying the turn-based smackdown on Kamashida is super satisfying, but he's not the kind of boss you want to be fighting when your mum walks in. Oh, I honestly despair of these video games, Robert! Well, you've just burst in here as usual, haven't you? You've got no context to this whatsoever. He's a physical manifestation of his own perversions. It's a no, comment- No, no! I mean, why do you have to take it in turns to hit him? Last up, we've got the king of ridiculous final forms. It's Xemnas from Kingdom Hearts 2, whose backstory would fill an entire Friday feature on its own, so let's not go there. Instead, let's look at the fact you initially fight him as himself, classic Square Enix villain, big silver hair, black cloak, only for him to then transform into a friggin' spaceship. How's he hiding that down his robes? Anyway, after Sora and Riku have hoverboarded around this thing for about 20 minutes, attacking mobs and about 37 Xemnas life bars, he decides being a spaceship is a bit much, and so transforms again into a massive suit of armour with an even more massive sword. That is more like it. Only the suit of armour then starts flinging actual bits of world at you. Then, to finish off, he transforms back into 
to himself, but this time with a cool robe, twin lightsabers. Technically, they're not lightsabers. But they are lightsabers. And proceeds to clone himself. So, to beat Xemnas, you have to fight Xemnas, spaceship Xemnas, suit of armor Xemnas with a massive sword who throws bits of landscape at you, and then twin lightsaber Xemnas plus a load of Xemnas clones. And he still loses the fight, honestly. All that effort only to lose to a kid who's been grinding low-level Heartless for 70 hours. So there we go, seven bosses who didn't look like that before we fought them. If you can think of any others, then please let us know in the comments. Leave a like if you want our channel to achieve its final form. Watch another video by hitting one of the links on screen. And subscribe for more of these list features every Friday. Thanks for watching.